Hey guys, it's Lauren with Discover Double Bass. Today I wanted to teach you one of my favorite solos in orchestral repertoire, the bass solo from Mahler Symphony 1. Now this is a really common solo, you hear this all the time in orchestral auditions and any kind of audition really, but I love it, I never get tired of it, it's one of my favorites, and so in this lesson I'm going to teach it to you. Now one of the things I love about this solo is how dark it is. And not only that, it's very haunting. It's basically Frere Jaca, right, but in minor. And so that, combined with Mahler's careful choice to put this on the lowest string instrument, makes this just very creepy and very haunting and emotional as well. And so when you're first learning this, the first choice you're going to have is, where am I going to play this opening line? Am I going to play it on the G string? Am I going to play it in thumb position on the D string? Am I going to play it in extended thumb position? You have a lot of different choices and a lot of people do many different things. Now the reason that I choose to play this on the G string is because I like the tone quality that I get on the G string. I feel like even though this is dark and haunting, I still want it to be emotional and I want to hear that forward kind of nasally tone quality. And then I feel like I have a lot more control over the contrast that I'm going to make when the statement is then said again or the echo comes back. So that's why I choose to play this starting on the G string and also I am thinking a little bit about how much I'm projecting. That's actually a big thing. You want to make sure that the person in the very end of the row or the very back of the hall at the last row can hear you just as well as the person in the front. So that's something that I think about. I project best when I'm on the G string, so that's definitely a thing. Um, but now with the call and the answer type aspect I was talking about, that's how I see this whole solo. You basically have these small statements of themes and then there's an echo right after them. So when I play these, I make sure to play the first one very forward, not necessarily loud, but a lot more confident and a lot more present. And then when the echo comes back, I think about what it would sound like as an echo. It would come down in intensity, um, and it's a little bit more desolate, that kind of thing. And so then the second, the second theme that's restated, I mean, these are all such tiny themes, but you know what I'm saying, um, that second three note pattern. <laughs> It's the same thing, but I like to build on this a little bit. So we've got that first three note pattern that sort of goes up and then back down. And then when we get to the second statement, this is leading somewhere. So I'll add a little bit extra to the first statement of this second theme. And then the echo again. Now with this note, with the echo of the second statement, I really build through this. I crescendo a little bit because I feel like it's really leading to that next statement, which is very different than the first two we've heard. This has a lot more motion than the first two. The first two were sort of these calls of, are you here? I'm here. That kind of thing. It's like they are almost moving. You can kind of feel that lead into um, the third note of each one, but they're still pretty stagnant. But this one moves more than the first two. So I want to make a big difference. And then when the echo comes back, it's still a little bit more forward than the others, but still an echo. So I like to go across here for the D string for a couple reasons. First of all, I think it helps to make that echo a little bit more present, um, and this I feel like is the most dramatic moment of that of the entire solo. And so I'll go across here to the D, but then also I like to play the last um, two, the last six notes, I guess, the last two bars um, on these harmonics. So that sets me up really well. Now, these last two 
statements, the statement and the echo, are a little bit tricky and they're always tricky for me on how to lead into them. Do I start bigger than the previous echo? And in order to decide that, I think about what's going on in my head in the storyline, essentially, of this music. And ultimately, I believe that this is where, you know, we've got the peak on that third statement and then the echo is coming away again. And so with these last two bars, I hear them as bells and I hear them as sort of bells walking away from whatever is happening. And so ultimately I've decided to stay at the same, relatively the same dynamic level as that echo. will be the softest part of the whole solo. And so um, I add a little bit of a ping as well at the beginning of each one of these notes because I do hear them as bells. I have to be careful not to put space in between. I don't want that. I want them connected, but I want them to have that um, you know, hitting a bell kind of sound. Of course, I have a wolf on my A, and so it's not wanting to sound properly, but you kind of get the idea. So it's a combination of thinking about what the overall story arch is or storyline, and also thinking about um, what the music calls for, what your context is, which in this case would be in an orchestra hall probably, um, and then figuring out how to best say that most convincingly. So I hope that this helped. I'm going to play the whole solo all the way through so you can hear all of this. So I hope you enjoyed learning one of my favorite solos in orchestral repertoire. If you have any questions, please leave a comment underneath the video and I'll answer you as soon as I possibly can. If you enjoyed this lesson and you'd like to learn more from me, I have several full-length courses available on discoverdoublebass.com and another one that will be coming out soon. It's a little bit of a surprise, but it goes along very well with the topics in this video. So be looking out for that. All of those are available exclusively on discoverdoublebass.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.